So if I don't want to receive those targeted ads, say on Facebook or something like that, there would be a way for me to turn that off. I don't know if uh, the advertisers will actually adhere to the self-regulation that they're talking about, but the government is saying that if you don't do it, there are going to be harsher rules and more limitations, so you guys better get this under control so that we don't have more controversy later. Here's a letter to Caroline Hacks. I don't know if you know her. She writes for Washington Post. She takes your letters, and then she reads it back and has a piece of advice at the end of it. So here's one that was actually sent to her by a reverend, a woman reverend. This is what she's writing. This is on living together before marriage. Very important. So often I observe when a young couple has been living together, one partner is far more interested in marriage than the other. But they are both too insecure to break up after investing several years in the relationship. The years they lived together were the years they could have, should have been independent, learning to know themselves, to stand on their own two feet and meet other people. I find it heartbreaking to perform these weddings, but haven't had a lot of luck talking couples out of them. Bottom line, the lack of courage and money to live independently gives birth to a lot of short-term marriages, having comfort and companionship like marriage without the commitment short circuits a lot of growing up. You know, but I, I think she makes a good point about whether you choose to live with someone really because that's what you both want and you have common goals and interests, or it just is the most economical thing to do and so you're trying to be practical and oh we'll save rent and then you you're kind of indirectly making this commitment without actually wanting to make the emotional commitment right so you're got all this material commitment of joining your stuff and paying one rent and all of that kind of thing but in the end you don't know that you really want to stay together and getting out of it like you said is you hard. know that's the first point I'll tell you that the parents will never like that kind of arrangement because they can see all the troubles because everything that they're going to go through they've already been there done that so this is one of the things parents will always tell you don't live together but then do the young people listen to you No. <laughs> well I don't think it's one-sided of course there are plenty of couples who live together get happily married and stay together I don't think uh, you know you can say it's all one or the other but it's something that should be a conscious choice I do agree with that if it's just because this is what's feasible for us and what's economical you could end up getting into a situation where you don't want to stay everybody understands as an employer that you only give 1099s to the independent contractors or people that you give $600 or more, you have to give them 1099 if they're independent contractors. But starting 2012, everyone, including corporations and people, anyone you give $600 to, you have to give them 1099. Oh, really? I mean, this is big thing, but IRS says they're losing as much as $300 billion to this underground economy where people just pay cash for stuff and don't charge it. I mean, that's supposed to happen to these third world countries, but no, it happens here in the United States of America, and the United States IRS says, we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to make you tell us who have you given anything more than $600. But if they can't really track it, I don't, don't you think people will continue hiding or not reporting that stuff? I uh, know they have to report it. Of course, IRS has another year to come up with the rules. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, for instance, in D.C., you know, the businesses in Virginia and Maryland provide most of the goods and services to the District of Columbia, but they don't pay their taxes. That's true. Or they pay minimum of $100. Right. That's about it. How do you catch them with this 1099? The only way you can catch them if the 1099s are going out of D.C. You can't really catch them if it is going out of, quote-unquote, Maryland, Virginia. But I, I believe D.C. government is going to pay a little time and effort into it and make sure they also get the billion dollar that they are losing in the tax collection. So the movie that everybody is talking about is Ravan. It's been a very interesting and controversial film 
headlining director Mani Ratnam, who we love to see his films. He's got Abhishek and Aishwarya in the same movie and retelling, a modern retelling, if you will, of the Ram, Sita and Ravan story from the Ramayan, the Hindu epic. Well, you know, Abhishek has not gotten the best reviews for his performance in this film. And I was reading uh, this piece where his, his dad, Amitabh, is a little defensive of his son, saying that this was really more about the editing and not his son's performance. But I have to tell you, I saw the movie, and Aishwarya does a fabulous job. She's really a wonderful performance. The music is beautiful. The cinematography is beautiful. But you know what? Abhishek is kind of annoying. Wait a second. The movie got three and a half stars. Mm -hmm. And according to Abhishek's interview, which I read, he said, Money Ratnam gets the best out of him. And this is one of his best movies <laughs> after Yuva. You know, Yuva was mm -hmm. one of uh, Money Ratnam's movie. Mm -hmm. And he felt that he got his stardom after Yuva. And Rowan is one of that production. I'm sorry. He feels he's done a great job. Well, it's interesting because they filmed this, uh, this movie both in Hindi and in Tamil at the same time. Aishwarya acted in both the Hindi version of the film and the Tamil version of the film. Now, Abhishek, of course, is only in the Hindi version. There was a South Indian actor in the Tamil version of Ravan. But uh, you can see that Aishwarya has really done an excellent job in portraying this character. She's not made up at all. She's very simple clothes, very tough scenes, too, in water and hardship there in the jungle. You know, it's not an easy movie set kind of film. And uh, Mani Ratnam has gotten gorgeous scenes and beautiful music from A.R. Rehman. Uh, you know, I think it's one of those love or hate movies. There are some people who just don't like it at all and others who think it's beautiful. This is a final story. And this is from Wired Magazine, which is my favorite magazine. You know, there are entirely too many dump trucks in the United States of America. Uh, if you live in an urban setting, you live in an apartment building, you throw your trash through the chute, and it goes to the bottom of the building, and where they crush it, make it smaller, and then a dump truck comes in. Well, in Barcelona and some of the other cities, what they have done they have done underground vacuum pipes. You will throw the trash, it'll get smaller, it'll go through these uh, vacuum pipes and go straight to the landfill. Beautiful. You will not have any dump trucks in wow. these cities. Let me give you the names of some of these cities. They are Barcelona, London, Stockholm, and in 2012, Canada is going that way. So it's about time the United States catches up with this sucky technology. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully then they'll have a similar thing for recycling, maybe? Good idea. <laughs> well, folks, you watch Darshan television here in Washington metro area, but now Darshan is going national as well. Of course, you'll be able to see us at 9 o'clock as usual, but around the country we'll be on Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern time, that means 12 o'clock in San Francisco or 2 o'clock in Chicago. We are very excited. We are in 35 cities and some of the cities. We are in Chicago, San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Las Vegas, Cleveland, Miami, Minneapolis, Denver, Nashville, New Orleans, Orlando. Remember, there's still going to be in conversation but now it's going to be everywhere, and I am so excited. And if you have family or friends in any of those cities, please be sure to tell them to tune in to Darshan America, 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. That's about all we have for you this week on Darshan. Thank you so much for joining us. Namaste. Namaste.